Welcome back, friends. My name is Eric. This is Mellow 7 Gaming. And despite what I said last episode, we are still with Kaiser Slaudern in the Zwei Liga. I just could not let it lie. I was so disappointed with the way the last season ended that we had to come back for one more season and try to get promoted, or at least make a decent showing of ourselves. I think we've got the team for it. I thought um, we'd take a look at my uh, my profile. Um, I'm a little bit surprised. This is like maybe the first time that discipline for me has been you know, highly rated, fairly tactical, consistent, hands-on approach, manages finances. I like all that. Domestic player bias. Don't have a huge... Well, that's not true. We could bring players in from other countries, but I think we've done okay. These are my stats. Haven't changed appreciably since we started, if at all. Um, I took the required whatever, play the appropriate level, and just... Um, min-maxed what I wanted. So that's kind of what we did. Um, let's my assistants do the talking for me. Doors always open. Professional player at the national level. Um, speak a couple languages, and my favorite clubs are Kaiserslautern, Arsenal, Nuremberg, because I had a huge save with them last season, and Christianestad also. Um, have played... I'm pretty sure I've played them on stream, but also um, I have some Swedish roots that are from very, very close to Christianestad, so... I've kind of picked them as my Swedish team. So that's what we got going on right now. I got a couple of people that don't like me. No idea why. Marut Siasari. Um, he's very good. <laughs> very good. Um, and Bernard Treas, not quite as good. Also dislikes me. Um, Christian Neidhart here. No idea why he likes me. Um, but he does. He's available on a free transfer. I thought about trying to bring him in, maybe as my assistant manager, but... Um, Judging player ability and, and uh, potential is not particularly good for him. And uh, Aga Heredi here likes me as well. Norwegian coach. No idea. I wonder where he's the head coach. Let's see if it tells me. The head coach of Denmark. Um, well, we have Ture. Is Ture Danish? Squad. He's on Kaiserslautern 2 at the moment. Soren Lippert is... What? Must be probably German, I guess, then, right? Um, Ture is Finnish. No, I don't know. I have no idea why we have that. All right. Speaking of all these players, let's take a look at transfers in and out. We have dramatically slimmed down the team, um, as you can see. So uh, lots of players have been cut, been sold, whatever. Um, I went through and kind of marked all the players that had no potential and not much ability um, on the Kaiserslautern 2 team and moved them on. And uh, so you're seeing, if we go to release, we're going to see a few players there, I believe. Um, release players right there. So... We cleaned up a lot. Now, some of these are just players whose contracts ended that we did not renew, such as Emmanuel Bonda. Um, some of these were players we expected to be something. Carlos Sickinger just never developed, never looked like he was going to be anything. Same with Neil Schatzel. Uh, Schatzel. Um, but then, you know, Bonda, Clemens, Huth. Uh, well, Clemens was another youth that never really did anything. But Huth and Waymans um, were players on the main team that I couldn't sell. Nobody wanted them. And I just... Didn't think it was worth renewing a contract, so we didn't. So those are some players out. As far as transfers go, um, Cruz was released on a free. Colina, I got an offer for him, so I took it. Um, 230000 It was a decent offer. Um, we sold Osgur finally. Uh, he wanted to go there, so good for him. Potentially 115000 Not really so much worried about that. It's just getting him off the books. Thomas Dovoster never did anything for us. I was happy to take 66000 Did I break even on that, or how much money did I lose on Stovoster? We made sixty six grand on him. He had four appearances and did nothing. He's got one more goal already for them. So I guess we just consider him a profit and move on with our lives and pretend that we did not pay a salary that whole time. Um... Sonar Kucic, uh, one of our youngsters, don't think he's got a huge potential, and Dortmund wanted him, and they were willing to give me money for him, so potentially 215000 I don't think we'll ever see that. Um, I just don't think he's going to get in and play enough, but it is what it is. Uh, Nicholas Kruiser, who the last two seasons has done not a whole heck of a lot for us. He was worth money, uh, so I got 775000 for him. Theodore Bergman, um, he's kind of a right winger, but not really fast enough. Um, but not really a mid-center. 
he's creative. We've played him a lot. I think we got some, you know, I think we got our use out of him, so to speak. If we take a look, um, you know, he was with Kaiser Slaughter when we took took over. Um, so we see him here, and he was never terrible. Um, you know, he had three years here where he was close to a seven. Um, and then he did kind of nothing um, the next two years with us. So, well, this is this year now. So this year he did 27 appearances, two goals, three assists, 6.7. He was pretty blah. Um, you know, and all this time these guys are getting their 10 to 20% pay raise, you know, contractually. So we just made money off of him, you know. Um, and I think we probably did. He came to the team on a free, um, and we sold him for 950. So I will consider that a victory. Uh, Yana Kuth was the goalkeeper that uh, I had a falling out with, and he wasn't particularly. He's got some decent stats, but not the stats we needed, unfortunately. Um, and so we sold him for 150. We took a little bit of a took a little bit of head on, but you know he was our primary goalkeeper. Well, played half the games anyway for us for two seasons, and played pretty well those first couple, and not terrible here, but not great either. Um, and then that was kind of the end of it. Um, he has good distribution, uh, but he had no no aerial reach, and he let in at least one bad goal every game. So not too upset. I would have let him go in a free, but we did get 150000 for him. Hamza Rafia, this really surprised me. They came looking for him um, and paid well, $1.2 million. And uh, I don't have any problems with him. He was kind of extra for what we had. So I'd already, I did list him. Um, but I didn't really expect much out of it. I was kind of shocked that this was the offer that came in. Um, and you can see we've had him, we paid 300,000 for him. So we made a tidy profit, 900, 900,000. Um, and you can see in Zvi League, 696, 699, he was okay in Zvi League. Um, you know, just about a seven. But when we hit uh, Bundesliga, he hadn't really developed enough for where we wanted to be. One goal, one assist, 6.64, and 25 appearances. We gave him a lot of playtime. We gave him the chance. Um, but it just never happened. So he's gone up to St. Pauli. Uh, they're still Bundesliga. Good for them. Uh, he's had one appearance of 6-6. Six, six. So um, we'll see how he does. Philip Duffner was a young, uh, youngster who they asked send, uh, from loan. I sent him. Axel the same way. Virgil I made available after some of the signings we have uh, in an attempt to get him to develop a little bit more. We'll get him some more regular playtime, I hope. Um, I mean, we can see this was the only season we really got much out of him here um, in Zvi Liga, and he just came on at the very end of it. You know, four of those goals are in the last few games and then did nothing here. So we're going to send him out. Hopefully he'll get some play with Freiburg and uh, be a regular starter, and he'll get some experience, and maybe we'll see a little bit more finishing on him. That's really what he needs is just some finishing. So players in. We started with Matt Ritz here. We got him from Club Bruges. We got him on a free. Uh, I think he's going to be a starter for us. That's my plan anyway. We take a look at his attributes. Um, great mentals. Really good mentals. I've played with colors here a little bit. Um, we go to... Blue for 11 and 12, because 11, 11 and 12-ish appears to be average for the league we're in right now. Um, and then we go to yellow for up till 15, and I think 16 we change to green. So those are the colors there. So so an, an above average player, generally speaking, we, I think we're pretty happy with him. Um, we're going to play him in the center as our playmaker, because you can see he's got good passing, great technique, vision, and anticipation and composure and decisions to do something with all that with a little bit of flair. So I think he's going to be really good for us. I'm super excited. Physicals aren't great, but they're not terrible. He doesn't need much to sit there and pass the ball off to somebody else. So we're going to go with it. If anything, I wouldn't mind dribbling being a little higher, but I have absolutely no complaints about this, about Mr. Ritz here. So first player in on a free. I think we did pretty well. Then we brought in Jan Otero here. Uh, we need somebody for the right side, we got him from Amiens, uh, 200000 actually paid real money for him, and he is going to sit right here for us on the right side. We haven't really had somebody who's just taken over the right and held it. We've had some reasonable players over there, but they haven't done anything spectacular with it. Uh, I hope he's going to be very good. He's got great natural fitness, as you can see, uh, but otherwise... Average to above average across the board. I think he's going to be good. There's very little, two, two, three, I'm sorry. Tackling, 
marking, and jumping reach. Three things he doesn't particularly need over here. You know, it wouldn't hurt, but I'm not going to complain about not having it. Um, and he's got great crossing. So um, with pretty decent anticipation and uh, his vision's okay and his technique's okay. So I think we'll take that. I think he's a step up from whatever we've had over there before. And we are going to be very happy with Mr. Juan Otero there. Um, the next one we got was, uh, we're missing somebody. There we go. No, no, we don't. We, we talked about Mr. Niels Peterson last season. We, we brought him in January. Okay, never mind. We're not missing anybody. I thought we were. Um, at this point, I had a fair number of strikers, including Virgilou, but I just wasn't happy with what we had, I guess. Virgilou wasn't, I didn't think, ready. I wasn't sure when he would be ready. He's fast, but I wanted goals. <laughs> I was really looking for a target man. And... Uh, I kind of stumbled across him. The, the scouts threw him up. I'd kind of given up already. I hadn't seen anything I wanted. Uh, and they found him at Olympic Lyon. And we paid 155000 Not too bad. I'm fine with that. And uh, you can see he's pretty good. Great dribbling. Finishing and first touch is good. Great heading. The only negative with that is his jumping reach is only 11. So if he can get to it, he's amazing. It's just he doesn't get very high up there for it. Um, he's only 5'10". Uh, you know, I mean, he's not short. But, uh, but he's not towering either. So uh, physical's all very good, though. Mentals are pretty decent. Uh, you know, it might be nice to see a little bit more vision or teamwork out of somebody who might be a target man. Uh, but I can live with this right now with uh, good finishing, good first touch, good composure, good technique. I think that's all good. Determination, decisions, the whole nine yards. Really, really happy with uh, El Hodge Collie here. Uh, I might need a... Ah, El Haj is easy. I'm not sure the, the, the call. Is it Collie or Coley, do you think? Um, and he is French. And yeah, that's about it. A five star, four and a half star potentially think. So he could get a little bit better. He's only 21 years old, so he probably will. Um, so when we signed him, we made Virgilio available on loan. That's how that worked. So at this point, I was left with a pretty small team, and I thought we needed a couple more players for depth, if for nothing else. Um, I decided to look for loanees because I didn't really want to spend a lot of money. Uh, so we got Joshua Brennett here, and uh, he is going to play primarily here, although he can play anywhere on either side and be pretty happy with it. Um, so we brought him in from, um, who did I say we brought him in from? From Hoffenheim. Uh, just alone, and uh, like I say, great here. He's very fast with that pace and acceleration, so that will help a lot. Good crossing, good dribbling, good first touch. Passing is okay. Technique is okay. Anticipation, vision, all that. So, you know, average to above average across the board with a lot of speed. So I think he's going to work out pretty well for us. We're going to play him mostly as an attacking, or uh, as a complete wingback, excuse me, right there. Uh, he's got the speed to go back and forth and work it. Um, my only worry now was left, mid-left, um, because we know that we will get some injuries from Stefaniak. Uh, it's just going to happen. And we didn't really have anybody left um, that I thought could fill in there very well. So we got one more player. We got uh, Pieter here from Colm. And uh, not as good. Let's just say it. He would prefer to be a striker. I don't know why he doesn't have any finishing. Um, but that's what he'd like to be. Um, but reasonable physicals over here. Uh, decisions are eh. He has a little bit of flair. His off the ball is okay. Uh, he's got good dribbling, good first touch, and good technique. So, and his passing is not terrible. So he is here primarily as, uh, as a left backup left winger. That's what we're going to use him for. We will see how it goes. Uh, so that leaves us a squad that looks something like this. Like I told you, much, much smaller than last season. We really trim people down. Uh, you can see Kaiser Slaughter 2 is down. Kaiser Slaughter nine, uh, under 19s is down as well. So um, everybody has been kind of trimmed back down, and we will see how that goes. Uh, unexpected side effect, I went through and actually spent the time to do training, both to build my own custom calendars, also to go through and do all the individual training and set up, make sure that the coach training was balanced now that I had done my own custom kind of calendars. And uh, whereas every coach needed to do two and about half of them needed to do three things to cover all of the players, now we're two and a couple of players only coaching one thing. Um, so the level of coaching that we can provide on an individual basis is quite a bit higher. So I'm really happy with that. Wasn't thinking about that, but that is a benefit to a smaller, tighter team. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, this is the team as it's 
as it's kind of configured right now, we've got Stefaniak and Otero on the wings with uh, Ritz and Meffert in the middle. Um, Brennett and Wooters on the outside uh, with Ibrahima Kanate mm -hmm. and Christian uh, Bialik here. Mueller is still our goalkeeper, and we're running Nils and El Hodge Kali out here as our strikers. We've got a couple tactics. Uh, the first one is just a base 4-4-2. We're going to counter, counter press, slightly higher defensive line, higher level engagement. Otherwise, I don't have a single other thing out here. We're going to see how it goes. Um, we're running cautious in this one. Then I have an attacking one here. Uh, we move our wingers up to attacking wingers. Um, we play a little bit wide in possession uh, in hopes to kind of... I don't know that the wide is really necessary. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it down. I, I like it. No, no, I'm going to leave it wide, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit early crosses. So we'll come out wide and we'll try to get those crosses in. Yeah, I think that'll work. That's what we're going to do. Um, otherwise, counter, counter, press the same as before, higher line of defense, and higher line. It's just meant to be a more attacking thing that we can switch to if we decide we need a goal, um, or we're playing a really bad lower league team and we just absolutely want to crush the life out of them. That's the plan anyway. So those are the two tactics I have set up. We're going to run this most of the time. And yeah. Uh, as far as the season has gone so far, uh, we have played Stuttgart and Dormstadt. Friendlies went okay. Uh, you can see right there, this is kind of a beginning of things to come. Menig is uh, on the bench there. He'll be a very good backup for us um, with his finishing and his first touch. Not too shabby um, as our backup, primary backup uh, striker there. Um, we went into the first match against Stuttgart, who I think is ex were expected to be third. I think they were expected to be fourth. Uh, and we crushed them. 4-0, absolutely crushed them. Um, Mifer got two goals. Nils got a goal. El Haj got a goal. Uh, Ritz was the assist for both of Mieferts. Uh Nils got his assist. Let's see, he plays on the right. From the left, from our new fill-in um, backup left winger because, of course, Stefaniak was injured, and El Hodge got his from our new right winger. So crosses went across to the far side. Both both goalkeepers did it. Uh, second match uh, against Dormstadt, who won their first match of the season 5 nothing. So we were 1-2 and two going into this one. Uh, two great teams that balanced each other out. Actually, we had a very exciting first half. It was 2-2. Both of us scored from open play. Both of us got a penalty shot from just teams crumbling under the pressure. Uh, and then nothing really happened in the second. Uh, is what it is. Stefaniak kind of tweaked him, tweaked uh, something again. So he uh, was out for one or two days. He'll be just fine for this one. So we've got Paderborn today. Uh, they're expected to be kind of lower half, but not really relegation level. We will see how that goes. Uh, at the moment, they're in 12th place with a win and a draw. I think maybe it's a win and a loss. Um, win and a loss. So... You know, they haven't done much worse than us. We have drawn FC Union. Uh, I've got a cat here, as you can see. She thinks she needs to be a part of this. And unfortunately, she's about to be disabused of that notion. Hop down, baby. Come on. Not right now. You can come up a little later. Good girl. Uh, we've drawn FC Union in the Pokal. That is the very next match. Um, and they are uh, Dry League. So we should hopefully be okay. We'll see how that goes. What did I, I like, I really like that logo. It doesn't, I don't know why. It's not very soccer-y. I really like Zvikow's geese chasing the soccer ball. It is what it is. All right. So match today. Let's go ahead and go into it. We've got Powderborn. Um, <clears throat> and team selection. We are at the Bentelair Arena. So we've already talked about this is what we're going to run. And we are going to go submit team. Instant result would not be a very exciting video. All right. Uh, tunnel. Nope. Lock, locker room. What do I have to do next? Oh, here we go. Dress room. This is the one thing I don't like about this one is I never quite know where I'm supposed to be clicking. Um, do this for the fans. Is that going to work? No, no, it doesn't. Um, we'll do faith. I mean, they're not even our fans out there. Off to the tunnel. Um, make sure we start well. And we will see how it goes. And you never ever, you know, are supposed to commentate on the opening kickoff. 
which means we score goals from Mueller. Boots one way up. We've moved him back from a sweeper keeper to just a defensive goalkeeper because, frankly, his distribution is horrible. Oh, my God. Mistake by the keeper. Peterson Oh, puts it off the post, though. Oh, that's 17 finishing, and it didn't get it in the goal. Um, that's, that's harsh. We really need to pounce on those mistakes. That's why we have him. Uh, well, it's a good sign. We've got him rattled already, I guess, although they've... They're leading in shots uh, and possession. We actually led in possession uh, the last two games. Um, clearly not here so far. They've come out um, fairly attacking. I think we're going to do a, a get creative, see if that works, and see if we can kind of weather the storm. I'm just assuming that they're, they're really pushing things early. Okay, both of our kind of beliefs have worn off there. We've still just got the one. I'm going to I'm gonna do a demand more or a push forward. I'm going to try push forward. I've never done push forward. They didn't like that. Um, they don't like being told to push forward when they're not, when they want to sit back. Apparently, that's how it works. Unfortunately, they're inspired. But is it our highlight? Stefaniak up on Kanate. Oh, Kanate got a head on it. Zingerly manages to pull that one down, though, pretty easily. Takes his time, boots it long. Wooters is there. Uh, Wooters is going to be our starting defensive left winger. We're going to try to play him as a as a complete wing back as well. That's what we're training him as. Training him as Stefaniak into Meifert. Meifert up to Ritz. Our passing is much better so far. Coley. Coley blows past his guy. Takes a step. Oh, big shot on goal. Goalkeeper manages to push it wide though. In for out for a uh, corner kick. See, the problem so far is defensive passing, not offensive passing this game. 70, not that offensive is great. Bielik back to Ritz. Ritz to Oterio, who just decides to go all the way back to Bennett and, I guess, let him off. Um, it's not terrible so far. I think we've had the, well, we've had the clear-cut chance, and we put one off the woodwork, so we've kind of balanced things out. Possession's just about equalized back out again. Dressing room... Um, uh, how do I say I'm not happy? I don't think we've been on. Well, we have been a little unlucky. I think, though, this early, we want to beat teams. Um, so I'm going to end the pep talk and we're actually going to come out. And we're going to play our more attacking one. I don't know that this is a good idea. And we're going to go attacking for five or ten minutes. We'll see how it goes. We'll come out, we'll push hard, and we'll see if we can break through. Kanate's already got a yellow. We are seeing more yellows with this kind of more pressing um, style of play. Um, 46 minutes. Like I say, we'll take it up to maybe 50, 55. If we get a goal, we'll bring it back. Peterson, back to Otero. Otero, excuse me, Ritz. Out to Brene. I'm trying to do more kind of reacting. We might actually set up a game plan at some point. I haven't decided. Peterson. So some of this will happen automatically. Feeds it across to Coley, who's got the shot. Yes! Third goal of the season. El Hodge. Coley with the goal. And I'm going to bring us back down to standard. Um, and, yeah, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Watch the replay. Peterson. Ritz. Ritz, Peterson, and into Coley. So our goalkeepers, our strikers managed to link up there. Not goalkeepers, our strikers. Peterson to Coley with the goal. Uh, it's supposed to go the other way around. Uh, but you know what? I'll take it. Brene up to Ritz. Can we get another one here right after the half? Oh, big one in for Peterson, who does get a touch on it, but makes it pushes a little bit wide left. Goalkeeper might have been there if that one was on target. But uh, it's nice. Put a little scare into him. Seven shots so far, four on target, a clear cut, a woodwork. Um, we actually had possession bounced out completely there for a second at 50%. They have started to make subs. Um, I don't know that I have any that I really desperately want. Let's let's see what we can do here. Um, El Haj is playing pretty good. Um, I haven't played Dessinger yet, and I haven't played Danny. Let's go ahead and put Danny in for Nils. Uh, he, it's just a poacher roll. He'll be happy with that. And... Maybe at 75, we bring Ag Acton in. We'll see. We'll see. We haven't seen Ramazan. Well, I take it back. I think he got a sub in the first game towards the end. Um, didn't get a lot of play time. 
We'll try to do our subs. We've got a small team. We'd like to get everybody a little bit of play time. There's no reason not to. Lost a little bit of possession. So we haven't seen Ogden. We haven't seen Dessinger. I'm going to bring Ogden in. I, think, I don't think we're really going to have a big fall off with him. I, I, think, I think we're going to be okay. I'd like to see him get some more play time. We're training him to be a playmaker. I think we're training him to be a playmaker. Uh-oh, this isn't, this isn't good. I make the sub, and all of a sudden, we switch over to here. Out to Framberger. Uh, deflected, but they managed to control. Austin Hem. They've got a guy off sides. Mueller dives to the left, makes the save. I haven't seen much from Danny or Sven yet. Last sub, 87 minutes. Um, let's bring Ramazan in on the left for, for Mr. Wooters. Just to get him some play time. Get him a few minutes. Get him an appearance. He's very defensive. Couple more seconds. Ref's probably going to blow the whistle here in a second. Free kick. And that's the whistle. We'll take it. Uh, pretty even match overall. We did just edge out possession at the end of it, 51%. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's a nice change. Um, yeah, we were a little bit more uh, aggressive than they were with the one clear cut. Slightly more chances, a little bit better with our uh, our aim as well. Um, defensive passing, 59. Offensive, 82. Um, their offense was 89, so they did still edge us a little bit there. Uh, crossing, eh, okay, I guess. Yeah. That's why they lost. And that's why we won, because ours was bigger. Not by much, though. But like I said, I think that was a pretty, pretty even game. So uh, dressing room, tell the boys they did fine. Uh, no, I think we can tell that was a good win for us. We, you know, it was a little bit of a harsh first half, but we came out in the second half, looked well, got our goal. Um, Guther first, be glad back. Dusseldorf beat Dormstadt. So uh, Dusseldorf so far undefeated, um, as is Gruther Firth. They've both played very well. Gold differential eight and five. They're just crushing people. Uh, we need to be at least third here um, and preferably automatic promotion so we don't have to play for it. Um, but we'll have to see how that game goes. I think our team is about almost half, you know, is different from last season as far as what we've got playing out there. Um, so it's going to take a few matches for everybody to kind of start to make those connections again. Um, between Otero, I mean, Meffert was here last year, but this whole thing here is different. Well, like this, we just draw a line here. None of these players were here last season, except, I guess, Peterson in the last half, but um, that's a lot. Four, four players in there. Um, and Wooters wasn't a full-time starter. So, you know, a lot of change. We'll have to start to build those connections again. Um, this is the only one we got going so far, but I think that's okay, and I think we will do okay. Um, I'm, I'm fine with this. So we'll continue on. We'll play. I'm probably not going to do as many episodes this season. Usually I do eight to eight to ten. Um, we'll probably be closer to maybe six this season. Um, I hadn't really planned on doing this one, so we'll see how it goes. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Don't forget to uh, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.